What's up guys? How many of you know what I have in my hand here? That's right, it's a shrimp net. We're in Mosquito Lagoon, Florida. I'm good with I'm here with my good friend Max Lally and we're going shrimping tonight. I picked up a fresh net today from Indian Mound Fish Camp. Their uh, bait and tackle shop has all your shrimping needs. I'm also gonna go ahead after the shrimping footage, I'm gonna do a full gear breakdown and everything you need to go out and shrimp at night in Florida. I'm gonna give you the gear breakdown before I show you the shrimping footage because it's nighttime. I want you to have a good idea of what's going on. If you already know about this stuff, go ahead and fast forward. I'm using my little boat just for uh, reference, but what you wanna do is imagine I'm out in the water and the current is moving this way. I wanna anchor, so I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna use two anchors and I want the current running sideways to my boat. So I'll throw out two anchors at the same time. Helps to have two people toss your two anchors this one is just purely for demonstration purposes, but you can see I've got an anchor fore and aft. Once you have those set well, currents running this way, you're going to set your lights. What I'm using are green LED lights. Green is good because it's easy on your eyes. You can buy lights like this on Amazon or you could buy them at... Uh, Indian Mound Fish Camp has everything you need. So I've got mushroom anchors and paracord and the way I have my lights rigged is so that they're not right on the bottom. You want these lights floating in the current about eight feet down. The shrimp are actually scared of the light. So what they're doing is popping the shrimp to the surface so that you can net them. But what you would do is then deploy your lights. Part of the reason you use the paracord is so that you're not putting all that strain on your lights. Cord. I'm going to throw this right there, babe. Why are you going to hit me? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> so now you've got your lights and your anchors deployed. You're going to have two big green blobs of light. You'll see this in the video in a second. You want the two blobs of green kind of just barely touching us. That's gonna funnel the shrimp to the center of your boat. Once you're set up like that, you are gonna have a guy on the bow and a guy on the stern dipping the shrimp. Now, I'm not ready, so right now, I have my shrimp net. Very important part, you don't wanna forget these at home. Uh, they're made out of cast net material and as the shrimp go by in the current, you will dip them. They'll fall down into the bottom of this sock and you can get a good amount in here before you have to empty the net. You don't have to empty the net every single shrimp because if it's good, they're gonna be coming by quick and you're gonna be working. That's your basic setup. They do this type of shrimping uh, in the Mosquito Lagoon, they do it in the Sebastian, Melbourne area, Miami, and places in Tampa, I believe. Once you've got this mastered, there's one more trick of the trade you can get, and that is a frame net. Come around here. So if the shrimping is really good, you, I'll put my frame net in, and this works with just the current. Uh, the shrimp will enter, enter here, they'll go down through that funnel, and they'll get caught in the back. It has a weight at the bottom there, that's just a downrigger weight, and then the top you tie off to your boat. Offset it a little bit and you'll catch better. Some nights these will catch a third of your shrimp. Some nights they'll just be full of seaweed and jellyfish, so you kind of got to gauge when it's a good night to go ahead and deploy one of these. That's it, y'all. Now to the shrimping. Good to go? Yeah.
filming at night is tough. But as we were just saying, this is what you don't want. You just have green light and no shrimp in the green light. Oh, there's one little baby shrimp right there. Little baby. And that one that one had gone through the net. But uh the tide is just getting going. Uh, Max is starting to doubt me a little bit. It's creeping in, but we're gonna find them. If you ever been out with me, I'm big on maintenance of things. I take care of my stuff. Like, it'll last forever and it doesn't need any maintenance. Look at that shrimp out there. See it? Get it. That's a good shrimp. We are capturing Max's first shrimp ever, I think. I don't think you got it. Did you get, get it? Get out of here. What do you mean? You, you got to fix your it. net though. Your net can't oh, be like that. It doesn't matter. I if you're going to be a pro anyway. shrimper, bro. This shrimp loves me. Oh, I hear it. Yeah. I hear it. Oh, it's a solid. It's, I get the gaff. Get well, me, you got a flying gaff? Now you can't ask for your money back. You got one shrimp. Oh. All right, folks. We're out here shrimping. It's been a real rough night. We've been getting eaten by bugs. Uh, the current wasn't right uh, out here for four hours, but it's turned on. Y'all, look at this. We are getting there. We got some big ones in there, but we're going to keep shrimping. All right, guys, we're stopping to count up. Just checking what I got. That is quite a few shrimp, y'all. And he's got quite a few up there. Might be getting close to the old full pull. Those are big old shrimp. Headlamp's killing me, but let me see here. Load it up. Got some in the bucket. We're gonna see. So, Max has got a property in North Dakota that he does all kinds of waterfowl hunting on, and he's gonna take these shrimp up to the farmers in the area that uh, we hunt. let them hunt. So, look at that, boys and girls. A little paying it forward. It was it was worth staying up till five in the morning. We we paid. We paid for these <laughs> shrimp. How about that y'all? There are some absolute jumbos in this pile. Look at that. Big old Gen A's. But uh so I think maybe I showed you, and, and you know, there's a lot of little ones too. But uh, and I knew you know what I'm gonna cook for you yet. I might make a perlu, I might make coconut fried or something like that. But the quickest way to head them, and it's a little bit laborious. It's another big word with tug trash. But I get them all on here, and I just start working through like that, and uh, slide your heads to one side, your bodies to the other, just like this. And uh, if two people do it, it goes pretty quick. This is like bait size. Yeah, well, they're a mix, you know, and, and we definitely could have, you could have just trophy hunted there and, and just netted the bigger shrimp if that's what you're into. But these little ones, I'll take these and I'll make stock with the heads and then I'll make like a shrimp purlu. I guess maybe I got to make you guys a shrimp purlu. That's a local dish around here. And uh, those little shrimp go in it perfectly give you guys another little tidbit of information these shrimp are actually uh, a brown shrimp some people call them hoppers or even pink shrimp but or winter shrimp if you notice they have a spot on their tails and on the tail tail it's not as colorful on a white shrimp that would be all purple and blue and very very colorful but these are a brown shrimp I believe, and these are the ones that we dip net in the wintertime, um, I believe they have more flavor than white shrimp, 
Uh, both are very good and we eat a lot of both. Now this is a white shrimp and you can see how colorful that tail is compared to the brown shrimp that is much less colorful and it also does not have the spot on the side. So there are some white shrimp mixed in with them, not very many. So to make a good purlu, you need to have a good shrimp stock. I have some shrimp heads from the shrimp we got. I've got a big pot of boiling water, and then I've got some celery, onion, garlic, and a bay leaf. Now, this is just what I had laying around, um, so I thought I'd throw some aromatics in there. So into my salted boiling water, I'm gonna put those veggies, and then I'm gonna put this whole bag of shrimp heads. I did sprinkle just a hair, just a little bit of Old Bay in there because it tastes good. Uh oh, it fogged up on you, B. Uh, and we're going to bring that back to a boil and let it go about 10 minutes, not long at all. And uh, we're going to have a delicious shrimp stock. 15 minutes, I simmered that. Uh, the heads, it doesn't take long to give up what they've got. Um, so, what I'm going to do, take this and I've got a colander inside of a bowl. Go ahead and strain this all off. Like that. Leave most of it in there and I can tell you from experience, just go ahead, put that in a bag and take it out to your trash can now. Don't throw it away inside the kitchen. You get in trouble. Take this, strain that off, and we got our beautiful shrimp stock. We're gonna see you in South Carolina. Hi, right, also we at camp now, um, making a shrimp purlu. Now, a shrimp purlu is a dish that's native to the Low Country in South Carolina, coastal Georgia, and Northeast Florida. It's kind of a cousin to jambalaya, and I believe its original origins would probably be Africa. But you see a lot of different versions depending on which region you're in. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I make mine. First, you gotta peel your shrimp. And uh, I've showed you guys a couple different ways to peel shrimp. You can use a fork, you can use one of them plastic things. This thing from Toadfish is like, dang ferrari shrimp peeler it's got a little i've already burned through a bunch of these but uh it's got like a little blade there slide it down just the back of that shrimp shell like that push it all the way down as you push it down roll your shrimp meat out and it's de-veined and uh clean butterfly take your shell put that in the sh uh, shell pile but Show you one real fast just for you can burn through some shrimp like this man and i have a uh discount code i think it's tug trash 15 will get you 15 percent off i know these things have been out of stock if you've been looking for one but they are back in stock now so go over to toadfish get you one of these shrimp peelers anyways i got that done i've got a black iron pot here heating up and I have about I don't know half a pack of bacon maybe a little bit more there cut up in little pieces and we're gonna start out on low heat we're gonna render that down what you got there this is homemade shrimp stock y'all seen me make it I made it at the house before we left and it is the key to this dish. It's really gonna make it good. Go ahead and make your own. Super simple, worth the, worth the hassle. Super secret ingredient. That's why the house smelled like shrimp when I got home from school. That was why. <laughs> but I'm gonna stir my bacon around here. And the reason you do it on a low heat is because I am trying to release the 
grease, so to speak, of the bacon. Purlu is always made with some sort of a, a smoked pork product and shrimp or chicken. And uh, I also have here, this is onions, peppers, little little bit of uh, celery. I forgot garlic, but I have some garlic powder, pepper, homemade daddle sauce, can of Rotel tomatoes, and some rice. What's this? That's a can of bacon grease. <laughs> I don't I don't know that I'm gonna need it, but it's just in you case I need know. just in case I want some extra bacon grease. Everything is better in bacon grease. Oh look yeah, who's oh, here. No. Good old Jeff. This. Oh he's got Dana with him too. I'm gonna have to let those dogs out of the camper. <laughs> so <laughs> Jeff Jeff trying to hide from the camera. Uh -huh. yeah. So once your bacon's crispy. Go ahead and pull that out and put it on a plate and set it aside like so But don't do nothing with that grease the grease is what you want That's flavor good flavor. Uh-huh. So you set that aside and then take your Onions and peppers. It's a little bit of celery and like I said, I, I should have garlic in here But I forgot it. So that's gonna go straight into there Then we're gonna cook this down we're not going to put color on it, but we're going to cook it till it's kind of clear and soft. And I'm going to put some garlic powder in there. Oh yeah, that smells good already. Mm -hmm. I put onions and peppers in everything. My favorite smell is onions and bacon grease. Oh yeah. Major food Jack, group, Jack. potatoes and onions. <laughs> uh -huh. and don't forget fish. <laughs> I know. I know how to do Don't this. Mess it. It's my recipe. <laughs> so I got some rice from the Piggly Wiggly and we're gonna go right into the onion and pepper pepper mixture. It's got that uh that uh bacon grease in there, and that's probably two cups of rice. And what we're gonna do is stir that rice around in there and uh kind of toast it till it gets uh opaque or see-through or whatever you want to call okay. it. Yeah, that's my big word for this video, <laughs> opaque. See, y'all don't think I know a lot of words, but I do. <laughs> so, you're just going to keep stirring that and toasting up that rice. All right, what's now? So, I've been stirring that rice, I don't know, three to five minutes or something like that. Get it all toasted up. I'm going to go in with a can of Rotel, like that. And then I'm gonna add this is a homemade daddle sauce that Harold's family gave me. Or I think they gave it to me. I don't yeah, know. It was but usually I would put a, a daddle pepper in there, but I just didn't have one, so I'm I'm going soft. And let's stir that around real quick. Get that going like that. Good. Might do a little bit more a little bit more daddle sauce. Why not? And then I'm gonna go in with that homemade shrimp stock. Like I said, I, this is the key, man. Don't don't skimp on it. These uh, containers are about a cup each. I'm gonna start out with two cups of uh, liquid and let that go for a second, and then add two more in a minute. Just like that. Uh, what else? Oh, I'm gonna put a, just a little bit of seasoning mix in there this is just like a cajun seasoning mix and some black pepper the uh the bacon is real salty already so i'm not going to add too much salt go ahead get that simmering i almost forgot i'm gonna put lime juice in there you could use like a white wine if you wanted or a lemon. I like limes if you watch my videos. So just give it a little bit of acid. So I I just been steady stirring on it. I added uh um three three cups of stock in, and as the rice absorbs the stock, I'm gonna add another shot of stock there. 
I'm gonna add my bacon back in like that and <laughs> you probably just got a bone hey <laughs> Uh, what, where did you get that? It was, it's like somebody had a. No. Once that no. gets going there. Steak. <laughs> I'm going to add my shrimp in. And it's almost done. We'll just cook it till the rice gets tender there. I'm going to put the lid on it. There you go. Mm -hmm. right? Is it good? <laughs> How is it, Jeff? Off the chain. <laughs> I didn't know she had me on the video. <laughs> I'm going shy. B, how are the ribs Jeff made? Mm. They just probably covered. You are covered. <laughs> all right, time for a taste test. Uh, probably cooked it 30 minutes all together. Got some shrimp in there. Why Use some of that rice. And I know it's hot. This is going to burn my mouth. It's good. It's hot. But, him. but <laughs> we, we want to sit down and eat because we're going to go turkey hunting this afternoon. We got Jeff and Dana here. They brought some ribs. We got the dogs. Where are they? Where are the ribs? Bianca. The ribs are over there oh, in the yeah. aluminum foil. Uh, but we're going to let it cool down just a little bit. We're going to sit down and eat. This is going to be the end of this one, you guys. Appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what you see. And we'll see you on the next one.